Hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber, a warm welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be talking about handbags and in particular, the hierarchy of handbags. It's going to be a three, four part series where I will talk about the different brands at the different levels of luxury. The precursor video, which I'm going to attach above, I spoke about luxury and how there are different levels of luxury in terms of the quality, the craftsmanship and the price charged for the product. So there's a pyramid at the bottom of the pyramid. It's your cheaper, lower quality uh, products. And as you go up the pyramid, the quality, the price and uh, goes up, but the quantity produced goes down. But what I will do is in each series, talk about the different levels of luxury and chart in there the different brands that dominate that segment in terms of quality, good quality. And um, I will also include brands that are very much up and coming. They're new brands, but they've proven themselves um, in terms of being consistent on the quality and the craftsmanship. But it's going to be a mix of known brands that are old and established and your newer brands. So when you watch any video or you're about to make a purchase, you have a good understanding of that brand, the merits of it and where it fits in relation to the other brands in the industry. I'm Anisu Sagonda and I manage a luxury lifestyle management business in London. My content is largely educationally focused and geared towards people who are typically new to money or keen to explore alternate mid lux or super brands that are a little under the radar, but still heavily weighted on quality. There are three key criteria that pretty much drive the handbag market. How desirable, accessible and visible is the bag. As you go up the pyramid, those variables change. So, for example, the accessibility, the price goes up. Um, it's less accessible as you go up the pyramid because the price is more expensive. Not as many people can afford or want to buy a bag that expensive. And then desirability, it tends to go up as you go up the pyramid and the visibility as you go up the pyramid decreases. You don't see so many of the very expensive bags out and about, but your everyday luxury visibility, you tend to see a lot more of your everyday luxury out and about. They're accessible in terms of the price. You don't think too deeply about spending money on them or having to save as you would, for example, a more expensive bag. And desirability is relative to you, your taste and your lifestyle. I'm going to be focused, as I mentioned, on your everyday luxury, and it's going to be bags that are priced 500 pounds and below. So it's either the entire brand's collection is under 500 pounds or their entry level ranges are around 500 pounds. I have five brands that are well known, established, older brands, and then I have three of your younger, newer, up and coming brands. I'm going to kick off with um, my first three of the older ones. Kate Spade, Michael Kors and Coach. I will talk about all three brands together interchangeably. My first two brands, Coach and Kate Spade, are owned by the same holding company, Tapestry, but they're very different in terms of the styles, which is what I like, the styles and the colors that they bring to the mix. Kate Spade, eponymously um, named, started by Kate in 1993 and she wanted to create the perfect handbag. Started with handbags and then clothes and the rest is history. But what I really like about Kate Spade is just the explosion of color. Whenever you walk into any of um, their boutiques, you're just met by a whole explosion of color. You don't see your blacks and browns and navies. It's just really bright, vibrant, fun colors combined with the whimsical um, styles and shapes and, and the different materials that she uses makes the bags incredibly versatile and a lot of fun to wear. They're versatile pieces you can wear either to work, out and about, to um, a wedding, a party, theater. They work anywhere and everywhere because of just the fun designs. They can pick up an outfit. They're a talking point. They're just really fun pieces that I like that are well made and come, as I said, in a range of different materials. So it's not just leather. There's a thick material style. There's your canvas. They also have really nice um, black totes, which I love. Those totes are lovely. They can be personalized and also their best selling Margot, a great work bag. And then what you will find in London is that um, Kate Spade boutiques um, are around, dotted around central London, but they have one residential uh, boutique in Chelsea. And Chelsea 
is one of the most expensive residential areas in London, uh, next to Belgravia, part of the Platinum Triangle, the most expensive residential um, areas in London. And that in, its, in itself is indicative of its target audience um, being in Chelsea, but nonetheless, it's a great brand. Um, over the years, I've seen Kate Middleton, a Duchess of Cambridge, being photographed out and about with Kate Spade bags. My next brand is Coach. As I said, part of the same family, started in 1941. So it's a very old business that trades very much on its heritage. They have a new creative designer, Stuart Vervis, and he's pretty much come in, hit the ground running, and just made the brand really relevant, hip, and cool again focused very much on the heritage of the brand um, the quality of the the leather the craftsmanship and he's producing some phenomenal new designs when it comes to quality in this particular price point coach bags are fairly priced you get what you pay for the bags are well made using really good quality leather to the point where i would actually say some of their um, top of the range lines are on par with brands such as MCM and even Marbury. Their Rogue bag, the Marbury Bayswater, they, they are neck and neck in terms of quality, in terms of craftsmanship. Um, it's holding its own. Coach is very confidently holding its own. Michael Kors, a few years ago, went through a massive uh, marketing campaign about five, seven, eight years ago. And I remember every other bag literally was a Michael Kors and the market was flooded with them. So they were a little overexposed at some point, but the quality is still very good. And they've come in over the years and changed the design and just designs and just reinvigorated the brand. So you're seeing more stuff from them, but it's different. And it takes you just to focus for a second and realize, oh, that's a Michael Kors bag. So there are a lot of new designs that I really like that are that are nice, that are easy to wear. A few weeks ago, there was a video where I was talking about um, men's work and weekend bags. I'll attach that video above. And in that bag, I spoke specifically about the quality of leather, especially when it comes to bags at the very top end of the market. And the leather they use is full grain. But when you look at brands such as Coach and Michael Kors, they will typically use the second level of, of le leather. So that is under the top bit, which is the full grain. So the full grain is the top bit of the hide. It's thick, it's strong, it's durable, and it's where the hair is. The second layer is the top grain, and the third layer is the genuine leather. I would hazard a guess, based on the quality of coach, the price, is they use the, the top grain and a little bit of the genuine leather for their cheaper ranges. And then Michael Kors would use more of the genuine leather and less of the top grain for their top line ranges. And what you find, what you're getting from your top grain leather is that it's still strong, it's durable, not as strong and durable as the full grain, but it's still very strong, it's durable. It's also the leather you use when you want a pristine finish. So when you see your bags that are very smooth from Coach or Michael Kors, it's that top grain. With top grain, you can also buff it and sand it and then emboss designs or texturize it or um, create that faux alligator look. That is what you use, the top grain, and it, it, it takes the shape and maintains it very well. But bags are made from top grain, genuine leather will still last and, and last a lifetime, look good and perform well, provided, of course, you look after them. But the one thing you won't get, which you buy into your full grain leather, is the patina. Because you've removed the top bit that has the ability to absorb the oil, you won't get the patina, how um, leather ages over time and develops that beautiful soft sheen, but it will still age, but it won't age the same as your full grain, which looks and feels better with time, particularly if you look after it, but it's still a very good quality product. Um, it'll perform well and last a long time. My next recommendation is an Italian brand called Ferla. Ferla was established in 1927 as a family business and they produce Italian leather, Italian made bags, largely Italian made, a few are made outside of Italy, but people buy into Ferla primarily because it's an Italian product. You're buying the Italian history, the heritage, the beauty of the leather that they're known for, the craftsmanship. That is what you're really buying into when you buy Ferla. A very, a very simple, easy brand to wear in terms of their contemporary chic designs. 
regardless of your taste if you're forced to choose something from Furla you would find something because the designs are just so easy they're so wearable they're fun to wear two great ranges they have the metropolis and they have the candy bags candy bags are fantastic fun transparent brightly colored bags either as a gym bag handbag something to wear out and about shopping just a fun pop of color and then the metropolis which i really like um, a structured crossbody bag that looks expensive that lasts looks amazing and confidently holds its own if you were to put it next to something from chanel for example you wouldn't scoff and think what is that it would confident confidently hold its own in that space and then my next brand is a french brand started in 1948 and it's called Longchamp and Longchamp my recommendations would not be complete without Le Pliage yes I know some of you are going to scoff in the comments I know and tell me off but you get people who will pay and others who won't pay a lot of money for a nylon bag but in this instance it's entirely warranted you're paying for the quality when it comes to Longchamp it's um their legendary nylon bag it's all nylon with leather handles and then a little bit of leather trim around the zip you're paying for a bag that is amazing it's um a carry anything and everything a travel bag it's just a brilliant bag that's easy to clean it's lightweight it's waterproof it comes in a whole range of colors and sizes so small medium large it is expensive but with le pliage you truly get what you pay for and what i also like about it is the fact that it, although people scoff at the price it is popular and you have people like kate middleton who has been seen out and about carrying le pliage in a range of colors le pliage and also kate spade bag so when someone like kate moss wears carries a bag it just gives it instant cred but out of the five that I've given you, in terms of quality order, I would say Coach first, then Furla, Michael Kors, then Kate Spade. Uh, I'd still put in Longchamp, but Longchamp is more than nylon bags I'm recommending, but they still do Le Pliage in the leather, the full leather, but the price is then a lot more expensive than under the 500 pounds that I mentioned as my starting point, but a really good selection of bags. I'm gonna move on now to the three new brands that I'd like to recommend. And the first one is Strathbury. In 2013, Guy and Leanne Handelby set out to create the first Scottish luxury handbag brand. And then one very sleepy Friday afternoon, 1st of December, 2017, Meghan Markle was spotted out and about in Nottingham carrying the Strathbury midi tote and in a heartbeat she literally catapulted a brand that very much operated under the radar onto the global fashion arena she carried two other styles uh, two subsequent um, occasions later and the Megan effect literally cemented their position um, in the fashion world very clean simple minimal aesthetic functional shapes um, they are very well made leather bags at an accessible price brand is based in scotland where the headquarters are they're designed but they're created handcrafted in southern spain i would like to recommend two styles the style that um Megan was seen carrying very simple, very easy, but straightforward functional shape, as I as I mentioned. Great for work, great as an everyday bag, just adds a little je ne sais quoi to an outfit. The structure of it is just the simplicity and then the gold bar, the signature gold bar on all their bags. Then the second is a different take on an evening bag. So the mini East West um, has the signature gold bar that all the bags have, but it's a small take on an evening bag. Typically, or in the past, it used to be the little clutch for the evening, but now a small crossbody bag comes in a whole slew of colors. Just a fun, edgy, alternate take on an evening bag. My second and third brands that I'd like to recommend, I'll talk about together. And they are two brands that have literally found fame, fortune and success overall success on the back of the power of social media and specifically instagram they've launched themselves on instagram and done phenomenally well they've been consistent in terms of the quality the craftsmanship very well made bags both handcrafted the first is a british brand called yusefi they're based here in london but the bags are handcrafted in spain 
absolutely beautiful bags. And what I like about both brands is that they bring just a whole different mix of styles to the equation. The other six brands that I've talked about, there are differences, but they do have classic shapes that you tend to find with other brands. But with Yusefi and my second brand, Wandler, they're just so different. And I really like that. It's a really mature take on bags. And especially as somebody who's 44, I like the fact that even at my age, I like both these bags. They're not too young. They're not trying too hard. The quality just speaks for itself. The finish, the leather, the styles are just so simple, very well made, well executed. They work well for any age group coupled with the fact that as an endorsement to their quality, they are retailed with most of the, the big online retailers. So your net a porter far-fetched, matches fashion, and my Teresa. Yusefi is also available in Harrods. The third one, Wandla, is a Dutch brand that is based in Amsterdam, and the bags are handcrafted in Italy. Absolutely beautiful geometric shaped um, bags that come in a whole slew of vibrant colors um, and the styles give off um, a Celine vibe. So a cross between the luggage and the Pico belt bag, uh, the Hortensia, beautiful bags. But what I really like is just the vibrant colors. They are amazing. And as I've said, they just bring a whole different mix of shapes. Going back to um, Yusefi, three styles I'd like to recommend from them. Firstly, the mini bomb bag, amazing as an evening bag, crossbody, rectangular shape. The second style is the loaf bag. This one I really like. It's just a very different take on a bag. It, it just works beautifully day to night. Um, the whole day you can wear it. It can work with so many different style options. And then the third is the bucket bag. Great as either a work bag to put in your laptop or just a weekend bag to pop in some stuff. But Wandler, Yusefi, watch this space. Amazing designs, very well made bags at accessible prices and the quality you're getting, you can't beat it. But I've given you eight brands that work phenomenally well as your entry everyday luxury brands. A good range of styles, um, very good quality leather. And as I mentioned, I thought it was really important to let you know how to choose, how to discern really good quality leather, because even if you don't go for some of the brands I've mentioned, if you decide to source a bag from an independent artisan who just makes bespoke bags, knowing the type of leather and going for handcrafted at a very minimum is all you need. But if there are any further questions, as always, do shoot them down in the comments down below, but share like and subscribe this video sharing with other people because it's really good grounding for just luxury across the board as always thank you for watching and i look forward to seeing you again soon